As we conclude our message series today, we're going to be looking at lessons from John on Patmos. Where was he? Well, he actually says in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And what does it mean to be in the Spirit? Well, it's not really about having the right mood or having a good attitude on the Sunday morning. Well, let me tell you, that helps. That helps. But that's not actually what John is saying there. Here's what David Pawson says. Great quote from him. To be in the Spirit is to be supernaturally controlled in your faculties, right? Every single part of your being controlled by the Holy Spirit, which we have watered down and used as a term for being in a kind of reverent mood on a Sunday morning. Do you get that? That's what it means to be in the Spirit. We'll unpack it in a moment to help us understand a little bit more of what it means to be in the Spirit. Let me use an illustration I've used before about baptism. When it comes to understanding what the Bible teaches about baptism, there are two words, and we try not to use Greek words, but I'm going to use two this morning, forgive me. Two words which are really important about understanding baptism. One's the Greek word bapto, and one's the other word baptismo. And so these two words should not be confused with the other. And the clearest example of what these words actually mean, the meaning of bapto and baptizo, is from the text of a Greek poet and physician called Nicander, who lived about 200 years before the birth of Christ. And actually, it is a recipe that he wrote down for making pickles, because in this recipe, he uses both the words bapto and baptizo. And Nicander writes in his little recipe that to make a pickle, the vegetable, say the cucumber, should first of all be dipped in boiling water. You want to clean it. Dipped in boiling water. And the word there is baptoed. Okay. Dipped in boiling water. And then he says it should be baptizo, baptized, immersed also in a vinegar solution. Now, both verbs concern the immersing of vegetables into the solution. But the first is temporary and external. It's just dipped and the outside gets wet or cleaned. But the second, the act of baptizo on the vegetable produces a permanent change because the solution penetrates it internally. And that's why we not only baptize in water, it's about baptizing in water, yes, but in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we often talk about the baptism of the Spirit. And in our new series starting next week on the Holy Spirit, we're going to be talking about that, that baptism in the Holy Spirit. But just as that gherkin now permanently takes on the very essence of the vinegar. It's been baptizo. It's not just being dipped and washed externally. It's been uh, baptizo and it's taken on the very essence. Our lives, when we are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are called to take on the very essence of Father, Son, and Spirit. So being in the Spirit isn't just about having an atmosphere But it's about being immersed in the presence of God, being immersed in the Spirit. And when that happens, do you know what? You're going to hear things and see things and experience things that you have never experienced before. So let's kick off looking at who is John. Well, he's one of Jesus' disciples. He's the son of Zebedee. He's the author of the fourth gospel, and also in the New Testament, he has written four letters or four epistles. And where is he? He's on the lovely island of Patmos, right? Patmos, it's a tiny island about eight kilometers by four kilometers in the Aegean Aegean Sea. I I think you're probably sitting there thinking, oh, blue skies, crystal clear blue water. It's located somewhere between Turkey and Greece. Okay, you may be thinking that, but actually in those days, Patmos was the Siberia of the ancient world. 
John is in chains, the sun beating down upon him. He's working in a quarry. He's cutting stone. He's in hard labor, cutting stone by hand. Think of the movie Papillon by, with uh, Paul Newman in it. Isn't that right? You know, he's in hard labor. The church is being persecuted by the emperor Domitian. And he is, well, he, he's there, but his heart is about 150 miles away in Asia Minor, in Turkey, amongst those seven churches that he loved, that he can't be ministering into directly at the moment, particularly the church of Ephesus. That's Patmos for you. And so today we're going to look at John's lessons in Patmos when he was in lockdown. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here's the first lesson. I can be in the spirit rather than under the circumstances. That's what we learn from John. I can be in the spirit rather than under the circumstances. Have you ever been going through tough times, hard times, and somebody says to you, how are you? And our response is, under the circumstances, it's like a big mattress isn't talking to me. Under the circumstances, it's like this, I'm doing okay. Under the circumstances. Well, let's remember John's circumstances. He's in forced labor. The heat. He's miles away. He's being called not only to be a prophet, to be an apostle. And yet he, like Paul that we talked about last week, is in chains. But do you notice that he doesn't even go there? He doesn't talk about his chains and his circumstances because he's learned how to get in the spirit. He's learned how to escape that prison and he says in Revelation 1 and verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So again, what does it mean to be in the spirit? It means to be totally immersed in the presence of God. Do you remember in Acts chapter 10, Peter is on the roof and he is in the spirit. He actually falls into a trance even and, and he see, has this vision of the, of the blanket coming down from heaven and the, all the different types of foods that are on it. He's immersed in God's presence and he's seeing and he's hearing things that he's never seen or heard before. He has a fresh revelation. Well, let me ask you today, have you settled for simply just watching this message or watching the service or are you in the spirit? Are you immersed in the presence of God? Think of it this way too. John's lockdown probably left the greatest legacy ever of any other period in his Christian life. Because he wrote the book of Revelation under the uh, leading of the Holy Spirit at that time. And you know what? The same can be true for you and me. These months, March to maybe July 2020, could actually be our defining moments. Now, generations of people have debated about how we encounter God and, and the unique places and times and circumstances that will be best to actually meet with God. And if you remember in John chapter 4, Jesus meets this woman at the well. She is the woman from Samaria and Samaritans and Jews didn't mix. And so they start chatting and they get a little bit into your personal life and she starts getting a little bit uncomfortable and, and changes the subject. You know, she, let's have a theological question, Jesus. And in, in the midst of this great theological debate, she's talking about how as a Samaritan, her people think that, well, the best place to meet God is on Mount Gerizim. And you Jews, well, the best place you think to meet God is on Mount Zion, on Jerusalem. But listen to what Jesus says, John 4, 23. But the time is coming, indeed it's now here, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. Friends, today, in your home, immerse yourself in the spirit of God. Don't immerse yourself in your circumstances and your challenges. Don't park up there, but immerse yourself in the Spirit. Now, how do we access God's presence in this way? Well, listen to what the writer of Hebrews says. Hebrews 10, 19 to 21 from the message paraphrase. So, friends, we can now 
without hesitation, walk right up to God, into the holy place. Jesus has cleared the way by the blood of his sacrifice, acting as our priest before God. The curtain into God's presence is his body. The writer here is drawing the imagery and the parallel between how God used to meet with his people and how he meets with them now. It used to be in that physical temple, but now we can get right into the Holy of Holies, that holy place with God. Not through an animal sacrifice, not through going to a particular place, but through what Jesus did for us on the cross. My goodness, right into the Holy of Holies. The high priest could only do that once a year and that you and I today can be in the Spirit, can be in God's presence. Every single moment, actually, of each day. And here is the challenge. The reality is that most Christians, many Christians, don't actually access that level of intimacy. Years ago, before transatlantic flights were commonplace, if anyone wanted to travel from England to New York, you went via a steamliner. And there's a story about a man who worked so hard and he saved up all his money to make this great trip. And he had just enough money to buy the ticket for the journey. It would take about two to three weeks to get across the Atlantic Ocean. And he went out and he bought a suitcase for his journey and he filled the suitcase with crackers and with cheese. That's all he could afford. And on board, while all the other passengers would meet every evening in this large ornate dining hall to eat their gourmet meals. He would be outside in the corner eating his cheese and his crackers. Now this went on day after day. He could smell the delicious food coming from the dining room. He heard the other passengers speak in in glowing terms about the quality of the food and then rubbing their bellies and saying how that after the cruise they would have to go on a diet. This poor passenger wanted to join all the other guests, but he had no extra money. And sometimes he'd lie awake at night dreaming of the sumptuous meals that the other guests were eating and had described to him. Now, toward the end of the trip, uh, this other passenger came alongside him and said, Sir, I can't help but noticing that every time we're in the banquet hall (laughs) feeding our faces, that you're eating those crackers and cheese over there. And the traveler's face was really uh, flushed with an embarrassment. He says, well, to tell you the truth, I only had enough money to buy the tickets. I don't have any other money to purchase fancy meals like the meals you're having. His friend raised his eyebrows in surprise and he shook his head. He said, sir, sir, don't you realize that the meals are included in the price of your ticket? The meals have already been paid for. Church, don't live on cheese and crackers Christianity. By faith, open the door. Be bold. That's what the writer of Hebrews says. Be bold and with confidence. Let's come into God's presence, not in our own righteousness, but through the blood of Jesus. As you open God's word, as you worship, as you pray, as you visualize yourself, in the throne room of God, where there's grace and mercy, feast in his presence, get in the Spirit. Friends, are you perhaps watching this live stream a message in lockdown, but you haven't yet started following Jesus? Or do you, like John, want to break free from being controlled by your desperate circumstances? Well, how do we do that? Well, you need Jesus. You need to accept his death on the cross for you. That's how you get into the spirit. It's through the blood of Jesus, the death of Jesus on the cross. We put our faith in what he has done for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. And in his resurrection, He Christ died for our sins. He cleanses us and, and forgives us and makes us right to come into his presence. And to be in the Spirit. This is the time, if you haven't already done so, to start your journey with Jesus. Why not respond 
today. Now, and if you're saying that you, know, that you want to start following the Jesus today, Jesus today, if you want to start following him, if you want to break out of the confinement of your circumstances and brokenness and get into the presence of the Holy Spirit, you can start that, that today by coming to him, by saying sorry, by embracing his forgiveness. And we even have a starter pack for you with the Bible and some worship CDs and, and there are devotions there as well. And if you just text us 493-500 or email us info at livinghope.im or even comment on that Facebook live stream, you know, we will help you begin that journey and get that starter pack to you. Why not be in the spirit today? rather than under the circumstances. In the Spirit. That's what John learned. No matter what's happening, you can be in the Spirit. You can have grace and mercy flowing over you, rather than being oh, crushed by your circumstances. Let me share with you a second lesson from John and Patmos. That in this lockdown, I can powerfully encounter Jesus. What difference does it make to be in the Spirit? Well, you're going to hear and see and encounter Jesus as never before. John says in verse 10, Suddenly I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. Okay, he heard, you know, and you and I will hear as we get into the Word, as we worship and we're in prayer and God starts speaking to us, gives us those God-infused thoughts. Well, he hears a, a trumpet. You know, very often when people think about heaven, they think about harps, you know, harps, chill. Hmm. But John says, no, I heard a trumpet. You know, a few years ago, Annette and I were carrying out ministry with our family in the beautiful country of Namibia. And we had spent a few weeks there and we were traveling from Kietman's Hoop in Namibia back to Cape Town. 1,000 kilometers in a single day we drove. So stressful. And thankfully, friends of ours owned a uh, beauty parlor. I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> That's what I'll call it. And uh, they, they said, come in the next day, both of you, and you have a couple's massage. A couple's massage. And we went into the room and lay down. And it was all dark and smells and all that. Literally, it was smells and bells. Smells. And this, the two girls come in to massage for an hour, it was going to be. And you could hear this. Kind of the mix between a Chinese restaurant music and Christian music. Do you know what I mean? This, you can hear this kind of soft, gentle music. But I can rec recognize some of the Christian songs in the background, yeah. And sometimes we think, you know, when God speaks, that's how God does. No, 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 no. It's a trumpet sound. It's not kind of harp music. You know, when we encounter Jesus, let me tell you, during this lockdown, that's a John, this, it's going to be, God's going to speak to you clearly like a trumpet. It's going to be a clarion call to you during lockdown. And in verse 11, John records God saying, write in the book everything you see and send it to the seven churches. Yeah, he may be in slave labor. He may be in captivity. He may be hundreds of miles from where he wants to be. His ministry may apparently be limited, but God has something for him to do. He's going to write a book. It's like the two on the road to Emmaus that Matt and Grace talked about in the communion time today. They had walked away from their ministry. They encountered Jesus. They had a revelation of him. They were in the spirit. Their eyes were open. Their hearts burned within them. And then they did a 180 and they went back to ministry in Jerusalem. Now, during this challenging time, God may not ask you to write a book. He may. As pastors, we have written this book, I suppose, six chapters over six weeks, six pastors, and it's free for you on the Kindle. Yeah, he, he, but he may not ask you to write a book, but he may give you a new ministry of intercession, praying for people. It may be a ministry of writing. Maybe like Claire Keyes, who's been uh, doing artwork and giving it away free of charge. That may be what the uh, call, the trumpet call is for you. It may be, come on, don't be greedy. You're, you're not spending all your money. Yeah, you've got so much, you can bless others who are starving. That may be what the Lord is saying in the trumpet call. Be a giver. It may be your three-minute Facebook testimony. That's what the Lord is saying. A trumpet call, come on, go public with your faith. Go public. Share your testimony. It may be the Lord speaking to you about prayer in lockdown. Be a man or a woman of prayer. 
And maybe the Lord wants you to bless others. I got a Facebook message the other day as I was preparing this. And uh, it was somebody saying, can you send one of your daughters around? I've just made delicious spring rolls and they're all for you. And I tell you what, it was only seconds before Phoebe was around the dad house, spring rolls. And uh, we had them eaten within minutes. And, and this is somebody who can't actually leave their home because of their medical condition. They're a nurse, bless you, you know who you are. They're a nurse, but because of a serious medical condition, they have actually been housebound during the whole time of lockdown. But there's been a trumpet call, bless others through your cooking ministry, bless others. Listen to John's experience, the trumpet sounds. It's a wake up call from God during his lockdown. And we read in Revelation 12 through 17. And when I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven golden lampstands, golden lampstands symbolic of the seven churches in Turkey. And standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, the Son of Man. Going back to the book of Daniel, this imagery here. And he was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. And his head and his hair were like white, like wool and white as snow. And his, and his eyes were like flames of fire. And his feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace and his and his voice thundered like mighty oceans and he held the seven stars in his right hand and the two and a sharp two-edged sword came out of his mouth and his face was like the sun in all of its brilliance and when I saw him I fell at his feet as if I were dead but he laid his right hand on me and he said don't be afraid I'm the first I'm the last yeah so so he had this revelation of Jesus Jesus, like you look different, Jesus, you're looking different. And he saw these lampstands, the churches that he loves so much. And he saw Jesus. You know, in Sunday school, we kind of have these pictures of Jesus in our storybooks. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Wouldn't say booty a goose. No, look at the risen post-ascension uh, vision of Jesus. Have you really met Jesus? That's the question. Look at the vision of the authentic Jesus when he's ascended on high. You know, Annette and I were recently in Poland and uh, it's a wonderful country, but and, and we went to all these churches and but to be honest, any Jesus we saw was a little baby and it was like Mary who was looking so big and glowing and all this type of thing and a little Jesus. But that's not the picture God wants us to have or to focus on. He he he's uh, white uh, he is brilliant. Uh, he he looks human yet he's divine. His clothes are, are right down to his feet. No longer is he naked, hanging shamefully on a cross. No, his clothes go right down to his feet. His, he's not bald. His hair is white. He's the ancient of days. He's, he's from the beginning. His eyes are blazing. Yeah, you're not going to be able to blindfold him, fold him anymore as the soldiers had done and, and had plucked the hair from his face and had, had beaten him. No, he's going to look you right in the eyes. And, and from his mouth comes a sh the word of God, a sharp two-edged sword as he challenged the Pharisees who were hypocrites. He is going to speak powerful words, challenging words into our lives. Today. His face is like the midnight sun. Uh, you know, you're gonna he is God Almighty. Fall down, but actually he loves us. He says, Don't fear, don't fear. I I I, I you're a co-heir with me. This is a time to get in the spirit, to have a fresh revelation of Jesus for visions and dreams and, and pictures and fresh encounters with him. See Jesus as you've never seen him before. Do you remember the story of Lazarus and, and how he, the friend of Jesus, he died and yet Jesus delayed his return and you have Mary and Martha. And when Jesus starts to enter the village, eventually Mary leaves the home and the mourners are asked, where is Mar Mary? And they say, oh, she's going to the tomb. But actually she went to Jesus. And that's the challenge for us. You know, when we're going through hard times, we can park up around the grave of our circumstances. That's where the friends had assumed Mary would be at the tomb, but actually she was going to Jesus. And that's what I would encourage us. You know, it's easy to park up in our circumstances, to park up around the disappointments and the grave and the, and the problems and the struggles, but we need to break past that and we need to get ourselves at the feet of Jesus during these days. 
You know, so many people are encountering Jesus afresh during lockdown. And I want us to hear just for a minute and a half from Emma what God has been doing through her in these seven weeks of lockdown. Say hello to Emma. Hello everybody, welcome to France. I moved out here a few years ago from the Isle of Man um, to a beautiful ski resort called Val d'Isere and whilst I love it, um, I really do miss the Christian community that naturally develops through a thriving church. Um, we had a seven week lockdown here and I quickly decided that I needed a strategy to get me through it happy and healthy and my number one weapon was God. Um, the Bible says uh, if we draw close to God he will draw close to us um, so that's exactly what I decided to do and I contacted Jonathan uh, he immediately put me in touch with um, a life group which we hooked up with every week pretty much became very quickly the highlight to my whole week um, and I love you guys um, um, we are called to love God and love one another and um, that's really difficult to achieve on our own so um, get plugged into God get connected to others uh, you will discover such love and such support and you know I bobbed along for quite a bit as a lukewarm Christian um, but while I've been in lockdown, I've discovered that I've grown more in that seven weeks than I have in the last seven years. So uh, it's been amazing having Living Hope here in the Alps. Um, it's been great. The world is full of people like Emma. What about you? The same can happen to you. You can grow more in seven weeks than the last seven years in lockdown if you will get in the spirit or maybe even if you'll start your journey today with Jesus don't just watch online respond today comment on that Facebook live chat start your journey with Jesus get connected don't just be a voyeur get connected to spiritual family join a life group with us you know for me this has been a time of personal revelation in lockdown a greater understanding of the love of the Father. I've been blown away by the work of the Holy Spirit. A fresh realization that God is for us, that He is for us. I think also I've had a revelation that I need to appreciate the wider church more. I need to appreciate what God is doing in other churches and other partnerships. And not just mine and ours. And we need to refocus on our primary calling. What's the message we're taking to the nations? No, that's the good news. There, are other, there may be key distinctives, but the first thing needs to be the good news of the gospel. And then that Jesus is yeah, he's Savior and he's my healer and he's the restorer of my soul. He's our provider. He's our perfect protector. He is our defender. And I think the biggest revelation I've had about lockdown is that I really felt that the Lord said, Jonathan, after lockdown is over and church reforms, whatever way that is, I want the church to be known for what it did for the poor during lockdown rather than you did great social media productions. <laughs> you did great videos and worship resources. And I was taken to that verse in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 10 where Paul is re recounting that he went to Jerusalem and the, the leader of the church, James, said uh, with the other leaders that, yeah, don't push burdens on the Gentiles backs and and don't they don't have to become Jews but in order for them to become followers of the Messiah but then he said but but here's one thing and, and, and Paul says their only suggestion was that we keep on helping the poor which I've been always eager to do and that's what the Lord said be eager to help the poor and we've been doing that on the Isle of Man thousands and thousands of pounds like to the food bank I think five thousand pounds to the food bank I don't know, six, seven, eight thousand pounds probably now to even people in the living of family, thousands of pounds across the world, yeah, through our 412 Partner Relief Fund. Meeting God, encountering Jesus in new ways during lockdown. Patmos was a time for John to encounter Jesus. It was a time when he would send messages 
to the church that would have an eternal significance. And this is all of our times to encounter Jesus. What will you do in lockdown that will echo in eternity? I don't mean you're going to learn a new hobby. I don't mean that. What will we do in lockdown that will echo in eternity? And here, I need to finish now. The third lesson in lockdown from John is that today is a day of victory. You know, it's so easy at the moment for one day to run in to the next. Even for pastors, what day is it? I have a friend, and like me, he's very busy. And last week, he was busy, busy, busy. And he was so over the moon that he finally got everything sorted. And their church service is at 4 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. And he said, I sat down on my computer to do the live church service. They just go straight on live, live stream, just him on Facebook Live. I sat down at my computer just before 4 o'clock to go live. And then I looked, and it was Saturday. It wasn't Sunday. It was like, what day is it? What day is it? Uh, what year is it? What year is it? You know, John did not lose track of what day it was. You know, he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. As the church exploded in the Gentile nations, these Gentile nations started to meet on a Sunday, not the Jewish Sabbath. And the reason why they didn't, uh, it wasn't just a cultural thing. Actually, the early church started to recognize the importance of the Lord's Day, of the first day of the week, like in Acts 20 and verse 7 and 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about setting aside some money on the first day of the week to help those who were starving in Jerusalem. And because the first day of the week is it's a start of something new. It's 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 the Lord's Day. It's the Lord's Day. Have you got it? And, and that's a day of victory. It's the Lord's Day. It's the day when Jesus rose from the dead. It's the day when God showed that no matter what Satan could throw, no matter what Satan thought bad was happening on Good Friday, that God turns everything around for good for those who love him. And the Lord's day, John was reminding himself, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, the day of victory. Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians 15, about death is swallowed up in victory in the Lord's day. Um, the circumstances were a nightmare for John, but, but it's a day of victory. Church, remember what day we are living in. That Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day. We are not stuck on Good Friday. This is a day of victory. This is a season of victory over the schemes of the enemy. Now, for some of us, you'll be sitting there and you will feel as if day 2,337 of lockdown. But listen, church, these are days of victory. A day when what is dead can come to life. Your lockdown is not your limitation. In fact, Paul says in Romans 8, 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We're not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Through Jesus who loved us. 60 years after the end of World War II. That's 2005. Two Japanese men. Both soldiers now in their 80s. Appeared from dense jungle. Okay. They had been hiding on this Philippine island. Which is 600 miles from Manila. And no one had told them about a great defeat. And an even greater victory. And the same parallel is for us as Christians. You know, in spite of his hard labor and his island captivity, John was reminding Satan of his great defeat. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Satan, you may think you're keeping me captive here, right, on this island, but I'm in the spirit on the Lord's day. This is a day of great victory. And he's declaring as well to himself and to the heavens, not only the defeat of Satan, but the victory of Christ. The Lord's day, the day when Jesus defeated sin, defeated Satan, defeated sickness, defeated death, defeated hell. And we are co-heirs with Christ. We are not victims. We are not in defeat. We are victors. We are more than conquerors. Paul says in Romans 8.31, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? 
God is for you if you're a follower of Jesus. Get on Jesus' side, regardless of your circumstances in lockdown. God is for you, right? See beyond your circumstances. Don't park up in your circumstances. Don't go to the grave. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. You know, in all of these three-minute Facebook testimonies, which I've seen all over the internet this week, well done, Living Hope family. I've heard a clarion call. They ha it hasn't been harp music, these testimonies. It's been a clarion call as the church has transitioned from playing chilled harp music Christianity to a loud trumpet call being sounded in your families, in your friends' homes, in your communities, in this nation and across the nation. Your testimonies are going global. Well done. You've been declaring this week, I may have been abused. I may have been bereaved. I may have lost my job. I, I may have blown it. I, I may have fallen into gross sin. But Jesus is my savior. Jesus is my provider. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my strength. Jesus is my friend. And I am a victor. Your lockdown does not have to be your limitation. Where are you today? Where are you today? Number one, get in the Spirit. Get beyond the walls of your home. Get beyond your circumstances and into the Spirit. If you'll draw near to God, oh, you'll be immersed. Even as I say that now, I can feel the presence of God on me just by drawing near through the blood of Jesus. Not, no guilt, no shame through Jesus. And secondly, be expectant of amazing new encounters with Jesus in this season. It's a season of growth and a season of acceleration where seven weeks can be more than a previous seven years. God has something new for you. If you'll come at Jesus' feet, get to Jesus' feet and listen to what he says. A season of ministry. In church, today is a day of victory. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. This day, this season is not Satan's time. This is the Lord's day. This is the Lord's season. Let's declare that so the enemy hears about his defeat. And let's declare it so that we and the heavens and the nation declares and hears the victory of Jesus. Let me pray for us right now. I'm going to pray for others as they, as they start their walk with Jesus. But let me pray for us as a church first. And then if you want me to include you, include you. I'm praying for you today, I'll do that as well. Let us pray. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Yeah, we have drawn near to you through the blood of Jesus, right into that holy place. And we thank you as we do that, we're going to have fresh encounters. Lord, I pray that many would hear today the trumpet call, the clarity of your voice, a clarion call to their lives, a fresh direction, and a walking in fresh victory today. Would you meet with your church? Lord, forgive us for parking up at the grave, parking up at the tomb, instead of coming to your feet and meeting you. Meet with us afresh. Holy Spirit, fill us. Come afresh, we pray. Fill us. Renew us. Yes. Speak to us, even in these moments. In Jesus' name. And Lord, for those who are starting their journey today, I pray for them today. As they say they want to start their journey, Lord, would you forgive them because of the blood on the cross. Would you forgive them because of your resurrection? As they place their faith in you now, would you come and dwell within them? Place your Holy Spirit within them. Give them the desire for holiness. Let them feel your love in them, through them, around them. In Jesus' name. Amen.